everyone and welcome to chapter 8.2a. This is the structure of the heart. Now in this video, there are a lot of names to remember. So um, to make this process simpler, we're going to do things a little bit different today. We are going to be doing a drawing exercise. So take out a piece of paper. We're going to start drawing. So first things first, draw your paper a heart shape and divide it into four chambers. So what you need to know about the heart is that it's a very muscular structure. And uh, yeah, it has four main chambers. And while we are looking at the structure of heart also, you need to imagine you are looking down on the table where a patient is laying down and you're dissecting the heart, right? So you're looking at someone else's heart here. Uh, the image on the left, right? The left side of the image would be the person's right. So it's someone else's right. So therefore, when we label the chambers of the heart, we label the top left corner to be the right atrium. And I'm just going to refer to it as the right side of the heart from now on. So the right atrium and the right ventricle. Again, if someone else's heart is not yours, the right side of the diagram would be the left of the person. So these are the four chambers of the heart with the right atrium right ventricle, left atrium, and left ventricle. And as you can see, I've used blue and red to symbolize um, deoxygenated blood as well as oxygenated blood. So the ones in blue would be carrying deoxygenated blood. Okay, now we have looked at the four chambers. Let's look at the blood vessels that are connected to these chambers, starting from the right atrium, right? So deoxygenated blood, from the all parts of the body would go into the vena cava, which then drains into the right atrium. So blood enters into the right atrium via the vena cava. Then the blood is going to go to the right ventricle. And, the, and it has to pass through the tricuspid valve. Now tricuspid is actually a very specific term. And um, Usually, we just call it AV valves, like atrioventricular valves, so AV valves. So yeah, don't need to fuss too much about the tricuspid word here. Now, the right ventricle is then going to bring this deoxygenated blood and pump it out of the heart towards the lungs. And, and whenever it has something to do with lungs, uh, we call it pulmonary. So the blood is leaving the heart via the pulmonary artery. Arteries, we learned this in uh, the previous videos that arteries always bring blood away from the heart. And pulmonary here, as I said, mentioned just now, refers to the lungs. Now, interesting thing about pulmonary artery, it has a valve. There is a semilunar valve right there at the junction between the ventricle and the artery. Okay, so where does blood go after this? Remember, it's still deoxygenated and therefore it's in blue, right? It's going to go to the lungs where gas exchange occurs and then blood is going to pass back into the heart. So it enters the heart by a vein. So veins are blood vessels. They always bring blood back towards the heart. Okay, and this vein is called the pulmonary vein. See, the naming makes sense because pulmonary has to do with the lungs. And then from the left atrium, that blood goes into the left ventricle, and this is via the bicuspid valve. And, yep, blood from the left ventricle then exits through the aorta, which is drawn here bringing that oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. So left atrium, bicuspid valve, then there is left ventricle and the aorta. Don't forget, the aorta also has a semilunar valve right there. Oops. So if you draw that all over again really quickly, four chambers, and remember the blood vessels and valves in sequence. You end up with this diagram, which is actually a very, very incredibly simplified version of the diagram I first showed you, right? 
So we can see here the two hearts drawn side by side. We have our representative version here that we just scribbled on a piece of paper. And this is really fancy per version which is animated. And I guess what's not shown in the scribble version is how these vessels actually intertwine. And we can see here how uh, the pulmonary artery is a little bit in front of the aorta and the aorta usually reaches to the back. Now what is also not shown is the inferior and superior vena cava uh, and actually they join both join to the right atrium okay and um, inferior just means that it brings deoxygenated blood from the lower parts of your body and the superior vena cava is bringing blood into the right atrium from the upper parts of your body that's all it means so yeah um here also i've seen you see uh, specific terms for semilunar valves even though we do in general just call them semilunar valves more specifically the valve in the pulmonary artery is called the pulmonary valve whereas the semilunar valve in the aorta is called the aortic valve now what is also missing in the diagram missing information is that the wall thickness are actually different. So here we just drew one line for all the walls, right? But really, the ventricle walls, ventricle walls are definitely thicker than the atrial walls, and the left ventricle is definitely way thicker than the right ventricle. And you can see the diagram here, which is more um realistic and shows the muscle layers. You can see here that the atrial wall is kind of thin, right? Kind of thin. But you can see how the walls right here are much thicker, the left ventricle, especially compared to the right ventricle. So yeah, I've put some dark markings here to label it so it, it, you can see in the little sketch. Now, I think in this like nice, more realistic diagram also, you can see why it's called a tricuspid and the bicuspid valve. And that's because this valve, tricuspid valve, is attached to three points here. The bicuspid valve is only attached to two points here. And therefore, the name actually does make sense. However, again, we only refer it to generally as the AV valves, the atrioventricular valves. One more thing that is actually uh, not shown in the diagram is what's on the outside. This is really a cross-section of what's going on. This here is what's happening on the outside. And you can see here how something called the left and right coronary arteries, they are joined to the aorta. So you can tell from how it's joined that the coronary artery and right they're both left and right, they carry oxygenated blood and they supply this oxygenated blood to the heart. And that is the structure of the heart. And that's it. Um, it's a relatively simple video, but in the next video, we'll be talking about what part of the heart contracts, relaxes, what valves are open, what valves are open. Therefore, it's very incredibly important for you to familiarize yourself with what's going on in the heart, what, what structures they are, what names they have before you move in into the next video. So yeah, that's it for today. I'll see you next video. Bye. -bye.